a decade ago, a man's fantasy became reality in a form never seen before, Kitchen Stadium, a giant cooking arena. The motivation for spending his fortune to create Kitchen Stadium was to encounter new original cuisines, which could be called true artistic creations. Out of cuisine! To realize his dream, he started choosing the top chefs of various styles of cooking. And he named his men the Iron Chefs, the invincible men of culinary skills. Iron Chef Japanese is Roksaburo Michiba. Iron Chef French is Hiroyuki Sakai. Iron Chef Chinese is Chen Kenichi. And Masahiko Kobe is Iron Chef Italian. The Kitchen Stadium is the arena where Iron Chefs await the challenges of master chefs from around the world. Both the Iron Chef and Challenger have one hour to tackle the theme ingredient of the day. Using all their senses, skills, creativity, they're to prepare artistic dishes never tasted before. And if ever a Challenger wins over the Iron Chef, he or she will gain the people's ovation and fame forever. Kitchen Stadium is the arena where you will meet the master chefs from around the world and their artistic creations. What inspiration will today's challenger bring? And how will the Iron Chef fight back? The heat will be on! If my memory serves me correctly, these three chefs were the original vanguards of my kitchen stadium. Iron Chef French, Hiroyuki Sakai. Iron Chef Chinese, Chen Kenichi. And Iron Chef Japanese, Rokusaburo Michiba. Along with Michiba, Iron Chef Chinese Chen and Iron Chef French Sakai have been leading the way in their fields of cuisine. Sakai was actually the first to fuse Japanese cooking techniques into traditional French-style preparation. For his sensitive and decorative dishes, he's often dubbed the Delacroix of French cuisine in Japan. In winning percentages, Sakai is number one, and he has also defeated a three-star French chef to win the King of Iron Chefs tournament. And now Chen. He is the true heir to his father, Chen Kenmin, a deity of Sichuan cooking. He has inherited his father's aura and strives to cut into new ground with his seemingly God-given senses. Chen is the leader in the number of battles fought, and he's hugely respected, especially in his culinary homeland. Now, Iron Chef fans in America, Sakai and Chen in their earlier days in Iron Chef Episode 1. Hiroyuki Sakai, he was the first to fuse meticulous Japanese cooking techniques into French cuisine, and for his artistic finish, he is called the Delacroix of French cuisine in Japan. Sakai stepped into the world of cooking at the age of just 17, and he learned his trade at many of the very best restaurants in Japan. But, believe it or not, he has never been trained in France, which is, of course, his culinary homeland. Well, you know, when other top chefs now were out there in France learning things the hard way, I was picking up Japanese cooking here in Japan. And that's the very foundation of my style of cooking. I, uh, I really believe that that's the basis. Sakai acquired some splendid Japanese techniques in presentation and consequently gave birth to his own style, Oriental French cuisine, which is really his own genre. 
At the age of 38, he opened his own place, La Rochelle, and he found himself basking in the spotlight literally overnight. It was this reputation as a culinary genius that made me appoint him as one of my iron chefs. And my decision was proven absolutely right. He is just marvelous, especially with desserts. And yes, as you probably know, seafood too. He is also known as the fish maestro Sakai. About a year after his debut, I chose cod, not a common ingredient in French cooking, and invited a challenger who caters to the royal family in Japan. The challenger was bold, experimental, but Sakai did not panic at all. He transformed cod into perfected French dishes. Once again, he lived up to his name, the maestro of fish. And the opening gong banged for this all French cuisine battle. The chefs duking it out with codfish is the theme. And Sakai, the first to the stand. And oh boy, Doc, I tell you, the size of these codfish up there. <laughs> They're amazing, it's, aren't they? Just and, huge. And the chefs seem to be blown away by their size. <laughs> wow. You know, you've got to fillet them to find out what you've got. It's really hard to distinguish the sexes. All right. Well, today's challenger has been a favorite of the Imperial family, done a lot of cooking for their members, which means he's also a right fit for our guest today. <laughs> <laughs> and with codfish dishes, what do you think of first, Matsuyuki-san? Oh, well, dear, I, the soft row of well, it. Look at, oh, that. look at that. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Bingo. this is the soft row. Oh, yeah, what definitely. A okay. Impact. Wow. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's my great. first time to see it like this. <laughs> So codfish, it's actually a, like a luxury item, almost okay. a delicacy and in Sakai's French cuisine. And Sakai's got a male there, right? Uh, yeah, same. Okay, He's a even male. Steven so far. Yeah, they both Both men out. going for the soft row, the male of the species Focus in on. demand early. Mm -hmm. Go. The challenger was complaining about something. We're not sure what's wrong. I'll try and get that for you. All right, stay on top of it. And as you know, in French cooking, the sauces are the, the key, right? right? And normally right. for fish dishes, you use sauces like... Um, uh, Bourg Blanc or Sabayon, Hollandaise mm -hmm. or uh, Charon sauce. So I imagine it'll be one of those. Okay, now into the pot here. Uh, oh, that's Omar lobster. Okay, French lobster, yeah. Iron Chef's side, and here's a break from the challenger. Yeah, and you can see it's just the claws right okay, now. Okay, and some prawns? Uh, that's the meat from the Omar lobster. Okay, yeah. all right. And so preparing the lobster meat right there. And now is, I think, some pie dough I saw here on the challenger side. Oh, really? Didn't see that. I thought so. It's it's not this. It's okay. not. Well, they're marinating with herbs now. But you didn't catch the pie dough. Oh, there, oh, right those, there. Oh, okay, pie dough. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so something that is cased in a pastry dough is called pâté in, uh, in okay. French. Oh, so yes, yes. You could be wrapping something up with that. Okay, now with Sakai. Cousin. Yes. Oh, clams. That's... Yeah, when the Iron Chef heard the uh, theme ingredient codfish on second thought, before I get to that, first let me tell you what the challenger is spicing this codfish with, and then I'll get back to you. Gar Garlic, tarragon, olive oil, ginger, scallions, and shallots. Okay, and uh, right. yes, we did pick up the garlic smell a few mm. minutes ago. Yeah, and it is uh, getting a little bit stronger as we go. <laughs> mm. I think also from the Iron <laughs> Chef side, too. Yes. I was catching a whiff of garlic from his side as well. The challenger now wrapping that one feverishly, and now... <sighs> That, the pie okay. dough around that, now Iron Chef Sakai is... Um, so inside there, he put the fillet of codfish, okay, right? Okay, filleted slice of cod. Right. And this one looks like prawns. The one, no, no, wait, the that's one from lobster. I think so. Okay, think lightly so, yeah. boiled then. Yeah, he was blanching it or lightly boiling the pieces. Oh. Okay. Oh, so you remember in a past episode, one chef had sea bass um, and just encased it in a pie. Remember that? I think With I remember Charon that sauce one. or something. Okay. Yeah. Now so this the, is going to be similar. Okay. Now the straw wrapping oh, and here, so Iron good. Chef's side, asparagus enclosed in plastic wrap with the dumpling type okay. item, Omar lobster and some greens. Yeah, rape leaves. Rape okay, leaves. Okay. Now, yes. hey, check. Whoa! Oh, hold on. It's a bonfire. What is going on? It's a bonfire. Help! Get the fire extinguisher. <laughs> Man is burning up the kitchen. And you see our cameraman back off that thing. It's more than what he bargained for. And getting danger pay. Thrilling. Easily the biggest fire we've had in here. So what exactly is he doing? Oh, thrilling is an understatement. Oh, you're right, Doc. The cameraman can put in for some hazard pay. <laughs> you know, during January you burn the lucky charms from the previous year, but don't burn down the house. <laughs> now the challenger is putting the heat on and not just on Sakai. Now here, the soft row. Yeah, you're right. And it's going to be a very delicate taste, this one right here. Okay. 
And also some hot bean paste on top of it, I think, is what he's doing. Yes. This soup was made using a broth with the codfish heads in it, white wine vinegar, salt, and as you noticed, spicy hot bean paste. Oh, that's different. Fish head soup. That packs a punch. Yeah, he'll be trying to get a stronger flavor and out of this. And accentuated by the Chinese hot bean paste in there, a real convergence of flavors in that soup. Uh, now, if you notice, Sarah, that is raw. It's okay, sashimi form. Ooh, Japanese style. Mm -hmm. yeah, and some flour, I okay. think he's got there. Yeah, normally that would be for a pie, then. All right, well, I have had this one before. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And the chef's now doing some very interesting things today. Now, what's Sakai on to with this one here? He's got the sauce inside the asparagus ring. It's like a little blanket of sauce. And then the codfish dumplings, if we can call them that, they're uh, <laughs> being placed on top. All right, and that colorful, creative dish is almost done. Is, is this one opening up the oven and... They are just about to take these out, and hmm. Doc, what do you think? How are they looking to you? Um, not bad. He might have overcooked them just a wee bit. Okay, well, the thin covering wouldn't take much heat to overcook those. And now, on the one the Iron Chef had, what was the sauce here? Cousin, yes. I have the ingredients in this sauce. It's made from lemon extract and pureed rape blossoms. Okay, oh, okay. sauce, and now some truffles. Yeah, and right. And zooming up close, it. truffles ah. resting on top of the cod dumpling. All right, the challenge of trying to reel in Iron Chef Sakai with codfish is the theme today. Iron Chef Sakai completed three dishes. An exquisite cod soup covered by a pastry of spring roll and adding a Chinese twist, hot bean paste. His soft roe mousse dumpling speaks of his expertise in using Japanese ingredients, creating a sauce of rape leaves and lemon. And finally, stir-fried cod with burdock sauce and radish, a perfect match for the crispiness of the cod belly itself. And what reaction did Sakai's dishes receive? You succeeded in not damaging the delicate soft roe by using light-flavored mushrooms. This is wonderful. Marvelous. It's not just the taste. Uh, how do you say? Well, the ingredients are very well balanced. Mm. Will Sakai be able to preserve his reputation as maestro of fish? If my memory serves me correctly, it was on a St. Valentine's Day that the first dessert chef stepped into my stadium. Using apples and chocolate, they were ordered to create dishes of culinary and artistic value. Sakai not only surprised us with his knife work, but also left us in awe of the depth of his culinary skill, preparing truly creative desserts. And the opening gong bang, the battle begins. Kind of a special battle today too to celebrate Valentine's Day, a double theme battle with chocolate and apples and duck. Yeah. I understand the challenger, Kondo, is quite an accomplished chef when it oh, comes to desserts. Absolutely, I've actually known her for more than uh, 10 years and she's a great person as well. Okay. But she's very strict about what she does. Uh, she can be very feminine at times, but when it comes to working, she's just a true uh, craftsman and we're very, very lucky to actually get to see this in person. Okay, and with today's theme, both chefs will try to come up with dishes that you might say uh, inspire romance. <laughs> a lot of ways they can use chocolate for that purpose. Exactly. Mm, of course. <laughs> but with Kondo, a dessert specialist, could be tough for Sakai. Did you see him roll his eyes when the apples were unveiled? Not <laughs> yeah. exactly the apples of his eye. <laughs> exactly. I know what you're saying, but you know, apples and chocolate can go very well together. Yeah, hmm. I think so. All yeah. right, we'll see what he comes up with. And wow, check this out. That's fast. <laughs> speed <laughs> and sense there. Blade wow. work with dexterity and speed to burn. Now, I mean, normally you would peel in the other direction like a spiral, uh, it would right? Be exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And look at this. Hey, on no waste either. <laughs> it's and, amazing. Know, it doesn't even look slow in slow motion. It's fast even in slow mo replay. <laughs> amazing. But uh, no matter how you slice it, it's what you do with it. After that'll count for today. Combining apples and chocolate dessert dishes to celebrate Valentine's Day. That's what Miss Kondo and Iron Chef Sakai are charged with. And 
They've been wowing us already from the beginning in Doc. Yeah, he's got the circle molder cookie cutter there, so it looks like a tartar maybe, something okay. along those lines. Okay. Yes, go ahead. This creamed puree that the Iron Chef has in this bowl is a mixture of fresh cream, Calvados brandy, apple puree, and white chocolate. All right, white mm. chocolate thought it was there. Okay, well that means it's not going to be tart tatin. Not a tart then. <laughs> Well, I think. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. While Sakai drops that in, Kondo is on to another one. We'll Fukuzan! See. Yes, Ota. The challenger is rolling out some dough, which is used in making tarts. Okay, for a tart. All, All right. right, and uh, also using the ring to cut out some pieces there. Yeah, exactly. And now what's the Iron Chef on to here? Uh, the Genoise. That's... Okay, I've got it. I've Ooh. got it. That would mean he'll be chilling this. Oh. Mm. Definitely. Okay. All right, we don't want to rush it. Okay. Any conclusions now? And I think the Iron Chef is working on a galette or a round cake, like an apple cake. Ooh, that looks okay, yummy. And look at that right there. Mm. Apples, chocolate, and more apples. Oh, that's right. Pretty. And for this one, so far 100% blanket coverage of the double themes for today. And the Iron Chef there with the little flip of the hand and now gonna squeeze it out, a chocolate sauce or something uh, similar to what the challenger was doing. Uh, -huh. uh not yes. exactly. No? He, okay, well he's sorta got a bob and weave uh, effort here <laughs> all over on. this. Okay, okay. <laughs> Now, this is a chilled tray, some kind of metal sheet? Exactly, which will make it harden quickly. Okay, for, uh, get a kind of chocolate net or something? Oh, okay, I see. I he see. actually could just right. bundle them up to look like straws as okay, well. Okay, well, it's not that colorful, but there is an artistic slant to it. Fukuzan! Yes, you got uh, it? As Hattori-san pointed out, this will be cooled and hardened, and then pieces will be broken off and used to decorate something else. Okay, there we and there it is, brown and white. Long. Now 20 minutes left in the chocolate and apples battle, Iron Chef's side. Okay, now let's see how things are going in the pressure cooker over here. Oh, yeah, there we go. Fukuzan! Yes. Over here in the pressure cooker, the Iron Chef is disappointed. He says once again the apples have not turned out as planned. That's twice, but mm. he says he will use this as a soup instead. Hmm, two rare setbacks for him so far today. So I think it would probably be better actually to bake the apples, though, and also time wise as mm. well. Would have been, but now rushing to discard the pulverized that? apples. <laughs> yeah, oh, he's, he's got it out now. There you go. Now on to Challenger Kondo's side, about to come out of the mold there and oh, okay. plops that right on. Whoa. Oh. I see. All right. Yeah, looks very nice, that one. Yeah, definitely. Now back to Iron Chef Sakai, not quite dusting, but dipping the wine glasses into chocolate to coat the rims oh, that's there. Clever. So it'd be a chocolate flavor kiss, I guess. I didn't know you oh. were such a romantic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and even though he said that he failed, he, he has managed to use this almost like a, a cocktail. Okay, well, look at this. Resourceful. It's turning into an apple cocktail. <laughs> so then the item out of the pressure cooker, that, right? that looks quite good then, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think so. And, you know, it speaks a lot for, like, just the depth of his experience, okay, what now he can do. Kondo side here, Ten the look of love. Go. And Sakai's oh going to try and <laughs> win your hearts right there with some roses. <laughs> Less than pen 10 minutes left now, the Iron Chef ambling back to his uh, chocolate-coated apple cocktail. You know, this kind of looks like a nest of sorts. Oh, it's the visuals nice. are sweet as well. Yeah, yeah. very. <laughs> Lots of things around in here, Valentine's decorations, and so why not take them and use them for his presentation yeah, exactly. today? Yeah, can't eat them, but... <laughs> now, back to the fridge. Oh, uh, if you see here, he's sticking them on there now. Pretty impressive, I'd have to say, about this one. Being very creative today, yeah. Taking mm. great care into the fridge. Just meticulous, really. And mm. uh, Umemiya-san, seeing all these great-looking desserts, plain old chocolate just doesn't seem to cut it anymore, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and Sakai, a, a sorbet or sherbet? Sorbet? No, I think it's an ice cream. Okay. To go. And oh, putting it on top right of Right over the heart oh. and into the last minute. It looks perfect. Iron Chef Sakai proudly presented three dishes. First, apple soup, a solution he cleverly reached after failing to prepare the apples correctly. The chocolate-coated glass and an apple crepe, he added, made it a romantic entry. Second is a mousse prepared for the liking of adults by using a whole bottle of red wine for the sauce. The contrast in texture between apples and chocolate is accented by white chocolate-flavored red wine sauce. But what really pleased me was this galette he created with three different forms of apples, a sorbet, uncooked and sautéed, layered like a tower, truly an eye-opener. Now let's hear what the panel had to say. This is just perfect. So good, mmm. This is so good I'm at a loss for words, so there. But will Sakai be able to defeat a top patissier? Chen Kenichi, 
He is the true heir to the god of Sejuan cooking, Chen Kenmin. Kenichi even goes beyond his father's horizons to explore the potential of Chinese food. His father, Chen Kenmin, was known as the deity of Sejuan cooking. It was after the war in the 50s when Kenmin came to Japan. He started introducing many new recipes to the Japanese palate, such as Mapo tofu and chili prawns, amongst others. They quickly became widespread all over Japan. In 1956, Kenichi was born as Kenmin's first son. Immediately after graduating from college, he entered the deity's kitchen to be trained under his great father. The father taught his son everything, and the son absorbed even his father's aura. And ever since his father passed away, he has been head chef of the great man's restaurant. I wanted Chen to join me in the kitchen stadium. After becoming an Iron Chef, he continued to follow in the footsteps of his father, becoming a master of flames, accepting challengers from many genres, and becoming a true Iron Chef. This is a must-see battle by Chen. Who was the challenger? It was Chen's father's top apprentice, and the man who had trained Chen himself after his father's death. The theme just had to be prawns, to give them a chance to fight it out with their different versions of chili prawns inspired by their master. But will Chen be able to live up to his senior's expectations? And the opening gong bang, the two men shake hands, and we are underway in all Chinese cuisine affair. They've got to be licking their chops, too, with prawns as the theme, right, Doc? Oh, definitely. And both these men well-versed on all the prawns in Japan, and what we have today are the ones normally used for cooking chili prawns in Chinese cuisine. Right. Well, it was Chen's father, Chen Kenmin, that spread this recipe all over right. Japan. He kind of invented the chili prawns, and he developed a form that matched the Japanese palate, so... Okay, and so more than just all Chinese, it's an all Szechuan affair. And up in the royal box today, we have Chen's mother, Yoko. She is here. And of course, surely the spirit of the late Chen Kenmin making itself felt with the surviving wife and son in Kitchen Stadium. She's here looking on. And now Chen's side, sh shark fins, I think, here? Yeah, you hit it right and on. And large yeah. pieces at that. Yeah, and top quality, too. Already boiling away. Fukuzan! From the floor, reporter Ota, go. I asked Iron Chef Chen how he feels going against a man who was his senior during his apprenticeship, and he surprised me by saying, well, actually, I'm more relaxed than usual. I say that because I know that I am his junior, and I'm committed to not creating any dishes that would disappoint him. All right, mm. but uh, in Kitchen Stadium, uh, winning dishes might be viewed as disappointing to the other <laughs> side. <laughs> now, I noticed the Iron Chef handling some unshelled prawns. Okay, there. giving them a rinse. Shells still on these. Boy, but, you know, the tough job if you're going to shell these prawns. Yeah, and unshelled prawns are called shareng in Chinese. Shareng, yeah. okay. And now here we have... Uh, uh, looks like uh, kinugasa mushrooms. They're hydrated again. Oh, that's okay. interesting. So they're kind of crispy in texture. They're normally used for stuffing something inside. Never seen oh. them like this. Really? And now a mincing operation in progress. Well, as you mentioned there, yeah, minced prawns. And I'm guessing that he'll combine them with bell peppers or something like like that, okay. steamed or fried, I imagine. Oh, yeah. I'm looking right. forward to that. And I see him here with some shelled prawns, right? Okay, and it prawns or some kind of a paste, it looks like. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay, and those are being boiled, a combo mm -hmm. of tofu and prawns, is that it? Uh, exactly, right. Okay, now over at his wok, Chen frying the steamed stuffed bell peppers. Oh, ah. see, so he's cooking them properly there. Stir frying after steaming them once. Yeah. Pan, okay, and now a second treatment, and he is really working the walk right there. You know, this is this is really appealing to me. I love this. It looks so great, don't you think? Yeah, it is looking so good. Yeah, well, you get to eat it. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now over to the challenger. Yes. Yeah, these are the shrimp dumplings that he was working on a moment ago. Okay, challenger chugging right along. Just like my commentating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, they're stuffing them. Oh, I see. I called that one, too. I'm, right. I'm batting like Ichiro today. Hey, this well, is he great. strikes out sometimes. <laughs> okay, 30 minutes gone. 30 
30 minutes in the battle are left passing the halfway point and uh, you know what's funny we haven't seen any sign yet of any chili prawns so far nothing from either man and we're in the second yeah, half already you're right there's been no sign at all but you know I, I imagine they will be doing that at the okay, very end okay the real showdown will come at the end then yeah or they just might have forgotten <laughs> okay now on Chen's side got the um, shark fins okay and so for a soup then okay shark fin soup or a variation thereof and looking in on that one now, the challenger side, Saito, the prawns are off, and these are un unshelled, right? Uh, no, shelled. No, the shelled the ones. Shelled ones yeah. Okay. It looks like the soup is the key. But yeah, which one though? I guess you're right there. Yeah. I think this one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So. Well, man alive, this has been a hot and heavy battle so far. Okay. Now this would be served on bread. What? Fukuza. Like on toast. Go ahead. Iron Chef Chen Kinich tells me that he's not making his chili prawns until the absolute very last minute. Oh. Okay, you see, I told you, I'm on a roll today. Another hit. <laughs> Chen saving his best till last. I know all the country's Szechuan chefs have got to be glued to their TVs watching these two battle it out oh, here. Definitely, yeah. If you cook Szechuan, it doesn't get any better than this. Now, we're under the 10 minute mark and the challenger frying up the prawns to a nice golden brown there. Yeah, doing a nice job with the frying. And hand. that has to be the first step in his prawns and chili sauce dish. That could very well be. Okay, now finally we are seeing them get to it here in crunch time. Yeah, he just lightly fried them. Okay, that's mm. gotta be it then. Yeah, it would be just great with the chili sauce. Oh yes, it would be. And there now the hot bean paste is okay, going in. Yeah, here we go. The foundation for Szechuan cooking, hot bean paste. Yeah, that's the heart and soul of Szechuan, and that's going to be the sauce for the chili prawns. Wow. Mm -hmm. And on this dish, it'll be a duel of the chili sauces, sort of the battle within the battle. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the challenger first to begin cooking his, oh, and now the Iron Chef okay. placing this one in. This is the creamed prawns. Uh-oh. Okay, I was wrong. Not on toast, Doc. Average is dropping. Well, I could be wrong. So the, the bread is for the chili prawns then. Okay, so this would be for flavoring hmm. the chili prawns. Oh, okay. Okay, and that there would be a luxurious flavor enhancer. Oh, it would be absolutely amazing, really, yeah. Now, how many how many minutes we got left here? Well, we're just about uh, six and a half from the finish. Okay, so he's going to have to uh, fire up the stove now then. Time to turn it on and not just the stove and... <laughs> okay, here we go. He'll fry these prawns up um, yes. for his chili prawns. Right, exactly. So that part's the same as on the other side. So far, they're uh, pretty much the same, yeah. And Saito did it just like this. Yeah, but the volume's a little different. Not as much. Oh, okay, Chen right. with fewer prawns, right. Maybe he'll fry a cup two times. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, everyone was on the edge of their seat wondering when Chen would start his chili prawns, but he made the comment that there was no need to worry. He said, I've got it covered. I will spend as much time as possible on it. Okay, well, we don't want to rush him, but we're around five minutes left. <laughs> okay, well, I think he's onto it right now, though. He's lightly cooking it in oil right okay, there. Okay, well, we basically see. what he's done is left the last five minutes He'll use those to bring home his chili prawns right on time, we hope. Okay, and he's on to the sauce here. Okay, with the hot bean paste there, I presume? Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, now, whoa, a couple of <laughs> ketchup, a couple of squirts going in. Well, actually, ketchup goes quite well with this, and it, it appeals to the Japanese palate All right, as well. now finally, the Iron Chef <laughs> hunkered down over the wok, cooking up the chili sauce for the dish invented by his father. Prawns in chili sauce? You could call it a family heirloom, and he's waited until the last five minutes of the battle to become fully engaged in a dish his mother must know all too well. But today, a special significance, cooking it right here in Kitchen Stadium. In a dish his mother must know all too well, but today a special significance cooking it right here in Kitchen Stadium. Fukuza! Yes, go ahead. Yeah, a moment ago, as you noticed, Chen San included plain old ketchup when making the sauce for his chili prawns. Right. Well, mm -hmm. when the challenger heard that bit of news, his reaction was to start grinning from ear to ear. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I wonder what the grin was for, though. Well, they surely won't have the same flavor, but why was he grinning about that? Well, both these guys are very skilled in condensing the flavors of prawns. They certainly are, and both reaching deep into their arsenal these here. These will taste so fabulous. Mm -hmm. Smelling here is just fantastic. <laughs> oh, yes. These guys are just so good. Look, in they go. Okay, the fried ones, right? Yeah. And flames coming off from under the wok. What a scene. And minced scallions are going to add a little extra aroma to it as well. I, my mouth is watering as Saito's about to finish his chili prawns here. Yeah, and adding some cornstarch now. And still the flames shooting up from under his wok there. You know, he's not making any shortcuts at all. I mean, this is the first time I've seen a complete version of this. Going the whole nine yards with this. This is going to taste absolutely amazing. And so much depth for oh, this dish Oh, definitely. Has. This is not a simple procedure. Not at all. All right, Saito's got his off the stove now. Yes. Yeah, I asked Challenger Saito about 
brought chili prawns in his choice of sauce ingredients, and he confirmed that yes, these days it is common to use ketchup, but he says, I chose to make it the original way, the way Master Chef Kim Min, our mentor, first created it. Mm, that's okay. what the grin's for. He's saying he's got the original. You know, mm. but then again, it's also true that uh, Ken Min was the first to use ketchup he was. in this, yeah. Oh. So he did that in Hong Kong. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now the Challengers is a, an original recipe in Szechuan. All right, either way, though, chili prawns on both sides, they are looking mm. mouth watering. Oh, yeah. And now, Chen, his prawns have gone in. Okay, oh, and scallions. Oh, way to go, Chen. And his sauce, <laughs> the color, just a darker shade of red than Saito's. Mm. Yeah, and you know, the interesting thing is we're seeing a traditional way and a newer way of making chili prawns. It's like tradition versus creative Chinese. Another cooking. battle within the battle. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And Chen now, flames uh, rising, and I'd say his shot a little higher. <laughs> and look at these prawns and chili sauce. A light deep fry and then stir fry in the sauce and onions. Three minutes left now. No problem getting it done in crunch time. A couple of Szechuan specialists. Here it is on replay. The heat and the fire. The flames <laughs> rising. A fiery finish for what'll have a fiery flavor. Now back with Saito. And oh, what, what's, Chinese, what do we have here in the world? Those are Chinese vine berries. Okay, oh. the one he had earlier, huh? Okay. And you know, this will add a flavor similar to crab meat. Okay. Iron Chef Chen now laying his prawns down in the middle. Okay, so maybe I was right. You were, yes. <laughs> yeah, just to confirm that the Iron Chef's chili prawns will be served with toast while the challenger has stayed with the more traditional rice. Okay, oh, Chen no. will have the unique way of enjoying this dish. And now we are down to 30 seconds left. Who knows, after this battle, there might be a rush on Szechuan restaurants across the country. <laughs> oh, that looks so good. Oh, they are all beautiful. gorgeous, and I see some uh, soup in the papaya. Oh. The, the late Chen Ken Min's wife, mother of the Iron Chef Chinese, witness to a great battle today. It's been a hot one. Oh, and that soup looks amazing Shark as well. fins in there, and up close on that one, you can almost taste it. And don't you think it'll go down smooth? Go. Iron Chef versus Challenger Saito, culinary combat, given a perfect Five theme seconds. today to show us their best. They've Three, done that. Two, and now the panel one. will do the rest. The final seconds tick down. That's it. The prawns battle is over. Iron Chef offers these five dishes. Prawns sautéed in mayonnaise sauce wrapped in cabbage. The caviar gives an appropriately salty touch. Minced prawns flavored with fermented beans on bell pepper boats. The lao ju gives it a little kick. Chinese winter melon and shark fin soup create a perfect platform to enjoy the soft and melting texture of the ground prawns. Stir-fried prawns milk flavor, a unique creation with pears and Chinese fungus added for texture. And lastly, his chili prawns served with toast, a salute to his father's final version using ketchup in the sauce. Let's see how the two chili prawns were compared. It really is hot. Hot, but somehow soothing, you know. And now, reactions to Chen's version. Mmm. Delish. I just knew Saito-san would prepare my father's first recipe. So, uh, I made it the way my father did, you know, in, in his later days. Well, the typical spiciness of Szechuan food is not overpowering. It's only a gentle suggestion in this. Will Chen win this one to become the true heir to his father's fame? The Carrot Battle. Chen had to fight against a challenger who was once on his side in a tournament in China. Carrots are not really a main course ingredient, but Chen managed them magnificently by coupling them with shark fins. He even presented a dessert using carrots. Chen went beyond the borders of Sichuan cooking, showing me the infinite potential of Chinese food. Opening gong banged, we are on, and the two chefs are off. Chen, and now the challenger shuffling up the stairs to the stand, and Doc, my goodness, 
Look at the carrots, they are gigantic up there. Yeah, they are large. They're the Western variety, as they're known in the supermarkets around Japan. Yeah. And normally these are used in Chinese cooking, mostly for decorative purposes, things like okay. that. Yeah. Now the Iron Chef here making some fine lines cut into that thick slice, not going all the way through though. Oh, I've seen something like this before. Okay, now look at the challenger here. What's he got here? This is ukoke. Hmm. Wh what is that? It's a Chinese variety of chicken. It's actually very good. Just like normal chicken? Well, uh, Chinese chicken, it's actually used quite often in medicinal soup and, and other things like that, yeah. All right, well, he's got his ukoke, and Chen's got some carrots in the wok. <laughs> hey, you started stir-frying Oh, yeah, grated carrot stir-fry. Okay, yeah. both grated. guys dynamic. We are seeing that early in this battle. Now, what's, hmm. uh, what's going on here? I don't understand. Huh? Is this crab? This is crab, right? And huh. white fish meat, is it? Okay. Okay. You have it? Yeah, they tell me this is flatfish. Oh, okay, right. flatfish. Oh, All right. I knew things weren't going to be that easy this time around. <laughs> so, wait a minute, what's, what's going on now? What's this? Uh, oh, peach! He's using peaches. Peach and carrots paired up. Wow. Yes. Yeah, the ingredients in this bowl, along with the peaches that you've already noticed, pomegranate syrup, carrots, and fragrant olive liqueur back to you. All right, mm. the guys both have been uh, up to speed here. Now look at this. The oh, challenger wow. is papaya oh, wow. soup. Oh, yeah, carrot soup in the papaya, right? All right, right? carrot soup, yes. yes. Oh, I see. All right, oh, this will be amazing as well. This guy's uh, turning out to be a a handful for Chen, and now here are the carrots and s some meat and some greens. Can you make them out here in this I one? I can't tell from here. Maybe green beans? Or garlic sprouts, perhaps. Ah, uh, yes, in I small think they're pieces. garlic mm -hmm. sprouts. Yeah, could nice be. color oh, yeah, contrast definitely. between oh, the green and orange so there. so pretty. Now back over to the challenger side, working the wok, the flames of Chinese cooking, bold yet retaining sensitivity in his cooking. Iron Chef Chen, taste test, yes, and an approving nod, working his wok, oh. getting down, and now here the um, oh, challengers. Okay. Yeah, okay. you've been curd, you're right. Acting like plates. Maybe like an extra dish? He's got time for another one. I okay, think he's gonna make another pull it dish. Off. And more yeah. fire now as the Szechuan Sage doing his thing, and another taste test. And he's locked in on that one. 15 minutes go. left now, and foie gras there. Oh, foie gras, oh. okay. Should fry up nicely, looking good. I'm getting really hungry now. Hey, you think you're hungry now? <laughs> think again, look at this, Iron Chef Chen. So that's the carrots and peach, maybe? Hmm, maybe, but for soup? Uh, it's volume-wise too small. Yeah, okay, it's well, not there, enough. There are the shark fins. Oh, okay, here shark we go. Shark fins, right. Oh, okay, so well, this could just be decoration. Though. Just for decoration? Yeah, you never know. All right. If you put it on a plate, and then you have the other stuff around it. Uh -huh, okay, uh -huh. hey, hold on here. Okay, what now? What's he, got, what's he down on this, the fins? Uh, well, mm -hmm. carrots, of Carrot course. Carrot paste, yeah. yes. Oh, okay. okay. This one yeah. here. Crab and flatfish and something yep. else. Combined with carrots. Okay, this would be a rather costly little dish, wouldn't mm -hmm. it? So and now, woo, what a great wow. look here at this sauce. Fukuzan? Yes. The Iron Chef keeps trying to make carrot pasta, but things are not going well, so much so that he's already in a panic. He keeps repeating, this is bad, this is not good. Oh, no. How is <laughs> he going to use this pasta? Mm, yeah. Good point. May have to scratch it anyway. Mm, he was chilling that. Yeah, but according to Ota, he wasn't going right. Oh. Now over here, the foie gras and meat and carrots on wow. top of this one. This is on the challenger side. That could be really good together. Mm. Whoa! <laughs> Not a drop spilled. <laughs> yeah, let's get a replay of that one. Uh, right. Give us a second. We'll rewind that. <laughs> that was incredible. That's amazing. And this is the shark fins and zoomed in on it. Oh, that looks mm. uh, really good. Look at that. And we, you can't get any closer. And here All it is. Right. Now let's okay, check it out. Wow, he flipped what? it over. <laughs> Ooh, wow. You know, it takes a certain amount of guts to try that, yeah, especially you, on national TV. <laughs> either you catch it or you don't. Exactly. Yeah. Not a lot in between. No. Okay. Okay. Oh, look at this. Right? Okay. This looks like a dish for a Chinese emperor, like a royal dish of some sort. Yes, you could say that. Now less than five minutes, this carrot battle, pedestrian theme, you might say, but nothing pedestrian about the action on both sides of Kitchen Stadium. Okay. Oh, take a look at this. This mm. is on the challenger side. Now, do you remember that black bird? Yeah. Right. So that went into the soup. This is a soup of that. Okay. Now we are under two minutes to go. Can the men make it, finish their dishes in time? And the Iron Chef, he's... Uh, he's just completed his soup. Okay. And the that. pasta noodles, they're a go, it looks like. Pasta looks right. Mm, All right. We've lost a little track. Not 
too sure exactly how many dishes the men have made it before the finish, but there's go. a quick scan of the Iron Chef side, uh, four right there at least as they scramble madly and on the challenger side, less than 30 seconds left now. Iron Chef Chen completed four dishes. Grated carrots in shark fin stew. The sweetness of the carrots tied everything together, including the clever addition of crab meat. Carrot pasta soup, a fusion of Chinese and Western cooking served Iron Chef style. Stir-fried carrots and sirloin, a great contrast between spiciness created by hot bean paste and chili and the sweetness of the carrots. And he created a dessert, stewing carrots in honey and pomegranate syrup. And now, time for the panel's critique. The essence of the shark fin, the flat fish, and the crab meat, they've all been absorbed by the fluffy grated carrots. And this really tells me that he knows carrots inside and out. The carrots that were cooked up in Chen San's dishes must be very, very happy, it looks like. <laughs> I, I really think so. So happy to be born, don't you think? Well, will Chen defeat his longtime rival? Now, Iron Chef fans across the states, enjoy the earlier days of Chen and Sakai.